Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. You, oh, you're fine. I'm, I'm listening. This has nothing to do with anything. <clears throat> <laughs> but back to the kid shit. So I can be understanding you older. You may not want to communicate as much. Cool. I understand you may live with your mother. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm not gonna go into that. Whatever, however your mother acts, that's how she acts. But however you act towards me, that's totally different because I'm not no deadbeat ass dad for the 14 years of your life. I motherfucking been there. I was a high hell or whatever. When I was homeless, I was motherfucking there. When I had money, I was there. Shit, 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 shit. You feel me? Like for 14 years, you've had everything you motherfucking wanted. May had, I might have had it when you motherfucking wanted right then, but your ass got it. You feel me? Right. I learned it from my parents. You feel me? Like you get shit when you deserve it. I don't believe in getting kids shit just because they say they want it. Deserve that shit. Deserve that shit. Earn that shit and appreciate that shit. That doesn't. That's me because I believe like too many motherfucking out here, young motherfuckers don't appreciate what they got. So. A lot of behavior stem from that. You feel me? And oh, as you get older, your non-appreciation and entitlement grows. I believe in stomping that shit out, but in a certain way. Right. Now, with mine, my oldest, you feel me? Like, like I said, we don't talk. We have not talked. Like, we may talk. She may call me back. I will text her like three, three, four times a week. Which is all because y'all used to have like such a tight relationship for most of her life. So it's like, <laughs> it's like kind of weird. You get it. That, um, that's what that's the shit that gets me. That's the like shit that even at the even like during the pandemic, like y'all said, at time, I remember she came in to visit you and you like on one of the zooms before we started the podcast. Like she was at your crib and like everything was gravy. She was <laughs> acting like normal. Uh huh. So like that's just weird. All right, but let me get into it. As time go on, like dealing with this bullshit, dealing with these, dealing with the check shit, the money shit. You feel me? I can't do with so much shit. You feel me? Some shit comes late. So whatever I can't give your mother on time, to me, it seems like you're taking that personal. I don't know what's being said to you. I know the conversations and the arguments me and your mother may have, but is that being related to you? Because your mother always tell or used to tell me, well, she goes through my phone, she knows all our conversations. You can prevent that. You shouldn't have her Young lady. doing adult shit. Young lady she should be privy to adult conversations. You feel me? Like my kids here don't know what the fuck me and maybe mama talk about unless we talk in the front of them. Right. Uh-huh. If I'm on the phone, get your ass, <clears throat> don't you need to be in my mouth. If I'm having a conversation, get your ass in your room. You feel me like adults are speaking. I, I I was raised children to be seen and not heard. You feel me like if, I, if it's an emergency, come interrupt me. But if it ain't, mind your manners. Yep. That's it. But that ain't the same thing on the other end. You feel me? Not my wife end, but my oldest. You feel me? With my oldest. So that leads to complications and problems. It gets and and then when the lack of talking, the lack of response comes, my personality comes out. That face shit comes out because then I'm a petty motherfucker. You feel me? But I be trying not to be petty with my own goddamn kids. But you ain't gonna make me feel. I don't give for who it is. You ain't gonna make me feel like I ain't shit and I ain't worth your communication. You feel me? When I'm reaching out and just telling you, I love you. We miss you. I just want you to come down here. Come spend some time to get no reply. As a father who has been there and does everything he can in his possibilities, I don't give a fuck what it is. I have to drive. When I go get my child, it's a six-hour journey. Yeah. Three day, three back. Three day, three back. Three day, three back. You feel me? Now, if I stop at my mother's house, that's an extra hour because, of course, they want to spend a little time before I get back on the road. Mm-hmm. It's a seven-hour journey. I've communicated on the other end. Can you at least meet me halfway? Nah. There's always some bullshit. Whatever. But if I want to see mine, I make that journey. So I've always made that journey. When you move, when they move <clears> to <throat> Texas on some on, on some random humbug shit and took my child the stakes away, I couldn't see you. Because I'm not gonna make that trip and I can't be made halfway. Right. You won't gonna put no money to that ticket. You won't gonna assist with hurt nothing. 
That was all me. No, I couldn't do that. I wasn't in the financial state to do it. Not saying I didn't want to. If I had this bread like that shit, I was gonna fuck with shit. I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna go see it and bring her back with me. But at that time, I didn't have the financial standing to do that shit. Yeah. But I still tried my best to communicate and, and, and do whatever I can. You feel me? Now you, now you back in VA. Shit was still okay. Shit getting kind of build that bond back, build that bond back. Whatever your mother's saying to you, I don't know. It ain't my place to know because. I, and once again, I have a, a different understanding when it comes to having a bond with your mother because I'm a single child. Um, I'm raised by a single mother. I'm a, I'm a mother the only child. You feel me? So I understand how Same here. what it means to be close with your mother and have, have that close bond. You feel me? And I don't know what it is to have a father. But as a father who is trying his fucking damnedest just to be in your fucking life, give, give, give me something. You feel me? You call me because I keep telling your mother, well, she ain't fucking calling you. And if she wants something, what the fuck? The only time I hear from her is, is a couple a week or so before the time I know you're going to want something. Nah, I'm not going to pick up the fucking phone then because you ain't going to use me for who it is, child or adult. You will not use me or make me feel that I am used. I'm your father. Communicate with me. Send me a text. I love you, dad. You ain't got to say shit else. Just to know you acknowledging my existence and my love for you. Then I gave you your I gave your grandmother's number. <clears throat> gave, her, gave her grandmother's number. It's, just call your grandma. Text your grandma. You, you, you don't talk, call and talk to her at all. You feel me? Y'all change your numbers like 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 people change their draws. So she don't have your number. So she can't mm -hmm. call and check on you. But now you have hers. Your grandmother's getting older. You may want to call and check on her. Did you do that? Nah. Understand, to a certain understanding. Once again, I try to be understanding to everybody in every situation because everybody's different. They handle shit different. You're raised mm -hmm. different. The stuff you go through in life makes you who you are at every stage in life you are in. Cool. Understanding. But once again, a child is still a child. Let a child have a certain amount of growth, room to grow, but still have some control over that environment. And what's going on and the behaviors in that environment to a certain point, you feel me? To a certain point. I believe that with all my children, the five, the eight, the 14, I'm gonna control whatever until a certain point. And I'm gonna let you have that room to do what you need to do so you can grow and have your own personality still with them grounded foundations in you from me and your mother. I don't think nothing wrong with that. But communication is key in any relationship. Marriage, <clears throat> friendship, parent, child, communication is key. And I continue to try to improve on my communication. Send texts out. I send paragraph text, text of the text of the text. I know you get them. Mm -hmm. And you're a teenager, so I know your phone is always with her. You remember, like, I know you got the phone with you on all the time. And that should be stressing me out. And it'd be making me think that I'm doing something wrong. If I've done something wrong. You feel me? So I'd be wondering, like, what the fuck am I doing? You feel me? Like, I don't have no reference point to be like, all right, my dad did this fucked up shit. Because my, my motherfucker wasn't in my life. My dad would die when I was eight. And before then, he wasn't really in my life. And I knew my dad. I talked to my dad once in the, once in the blue moon because he didn't communicate. You feel me? Mm. It is what it is. My biggest thing is with my kids, I don't want nothing in my life to replicate on their lives. I don't want no bad mm. relationships that I've had to be the same bad relationships that you had. You feel me? And when I be seeing shit, like I, I, I be, really believe in like my gift from God is that gift of foresight. I can see shit before it happens and try to divert the path. You feel me? So that's when I see shit coming, all right, let's move this way. Or I see shit coming, let's mm -hmm. act this way. Or let's do this. But it's painful when I, I, I see it happening. And Ross, what I do, the shit still happens. Or the shit is still happening. I try my best to try to build my bond, perfect my bond with all my kids because at the end of the day, I want my kids to know they love regardless of what situation. I don't give a fuck if I die tomorrow. I want my kids to always know 20 years down the road, my dad loved me. I remember when my dad did this and my dad did this. I remember my dad used to come out room and rub my back every night. I remember my dad, this little subtle shit. You feel me? I do this with my kids know I'm here. I fucking love you. I, I definitely feel you there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a little shit. You feel me? I ain't got to do no, nothing big. I'm not that parent's going to just buy you everything in the world and try to show you I love you with my fucking money. Just that shit is know that you was there, man. because 
I know in my experience with kids, I can buy you the big, I can go out and spend a thousand dollars on something. You'll go play with it and appreciate the shit that you got for a dollar way more than this thousand dollar shit. Yeah. I know this. I know this. I went through two and three laptops, went through gold chains for a chat. I went through um, the, the, the hottest and best electronic shit that's come out for the past years. Kids have gotten and don't even give a fuck. That's some real shit there. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's why I, I, I've always been on a, on a stance of uh-huh. burning a kid everything, teach a kid everything. You feel me? That's the shit because I came from, I'll tell you now, as a grown ass man, I can't name no favorite toy my mother bought me and shit. But I can tell you one thing I still had from a child that was the most sentimental shit. It was a motherfucker stuffed animal. I'm, 40, I'm a 39 year grown ass man. Yeah, I don't have it. It's still at my mother's house, but all my kids, that's their shit now. You feel me? That mm-hmm. shit, I, that shit is. I'm 39. That shit is 42 years old because it came out in 1980. You feel me? It's the wrinkles, dog. You ain't know about it? Go Google that shit. The wrinkles, dog. All my kids have had that same motherfucking shit. It's in my mother's house now. That yeah. shit means something to me. You feel me? And it means even more because it's went through all my kids. Mm. I don't want to keep that shit, so I'm going through all their kids too. That type of shit. That's what I remember. Not no expensive ass shit. That shit probably won't. Even, that shit probably ain't cost nothing back then. You feel me? Yeah. But nothing. My parents spent buku money on. Do I fucking remember? I remember the yeah, stuff yeah, no, my, my mom spent money on, but I definitely more remember like the little simple shit, like the the certain times we would walk certain places or like ex- exactly experiences we had more than like a thing or something like that like even and that's if, what i try to do with mine that's what i want with mine money. that's what i've tried to do yeah. and establish with mine like the time we spent once we got there together or the ride there or something like that that was like <clears throat> that's the part that stands out not necessarily anything she spent the money on like we could have been going to a trash heap somewhere but the the ride there was so cool like oh man that was dope Somebody spent enough, somebody cared enough about me to spend time with me like that, or like I really enjoyed that moment. Mm-hmm. If ever, no, and that's real. And it's those and, it, and, it, and those experiences are not only for the kid, it's for the parent too. On some real shit. You feel me? Like as parents, we get when we get older, all you have is your memories while you can retain them. Mm-hmm. People take pictures every day now. For all them pictures, it's, a, it's very few the people that pr- print their motherfucking pictures out and still have photo albums. Everything is online. Everything is digital. Those motherfucking photo albums that your grandparents have, those is motherfucking great-ass memories. That shit's a gold. You remember those are gold. Nowadays, Living we life. don't have that. So mm-hmm. I try to have those type of memories with my kids so you can always remember that. Every kid, every child I have, we've all gone to the walk the same route over by the Appomattox River. And after, you feel me? Like we've all take that path. We all walk that path. We all do it together, from the oldest to the youngest. We've done it individually, and we do it as a group. Mm-hmm. Every time we take pictures there, every time we do the same exact shit, because I want them to know that this was Daddy's spot. He used to always take us here. So I just had to have some memories. You feel me? I know a lot of fathers don't fucking do that no more, or don't do that. Period. That shit fucking matters. That shit motherfucking matters. I don't give a fuck about buying shit. When I got the money, I got it. When I don't, I fucking don't. But I'm still going to try to be the best fucking father I can. That's just that. But on the other side is where you get the feeling that makes you feel a certain type of low fucking way. Fuck that shit. Just like I be telling motherfuckers, don't let what other people think dictate how you feel. I fall into that same fucking trap. But it ain't the feelings of another adult. It's the perpetuated feelings or alleged feelings of my own child that I be feeling some type of way on. Motherfuckers here this can feel any type of way they would say whatever the fuck they want. I don't give a fuck. I'm real. I'm going to say the shit the motherfuckers be thinking in their goddamn head be trying to push off. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I've said it many times. I don't give a fuck about that shit. But I do give a fuck about that shit. I do give a fuck about what my kids think about me. I do. 
None of these adults. I give a fuck. That's what no adults think about me. Fuck all y'all. Uh huh. Mm, give a fuck. But my own, the twenty three chromosomes I've given away to each one of mine. I care about that shit. I do. And any real parent that say they don't uh -huh. ain't, ain't no real fucking parent. Fact. You ain't. Sorry, I'm. I'll say it even proper. You, aren't, you, you aren't a proper parent if you don't give a fuck about what your kids think about you. If your kid is mad at you, cool. Every kid gets mad. That oh well, whatever. But when it comes to the point where you feel disdain, that's a total different level. No good parents should feel that shit. I'm really worried about emotions. Emotional pass, but how you feel about me is that's mm -hmm. different. That's not an emotion. That's an actual state of being. Mm -hmm. That's a disconnect in our relationship. I can't have that. Can't have that. And then when you doing everything you can to build that bridge, but it won't connect on the other side. That's the shit that really like it. It, it, it hits different. Mm -hmm. But when you got other kids still attained to and still trying to do the same shit with them, you try to push on. But you can't forget about the other kid either. You feel me? So I, I, I work. I, I live. I live in a constant conundrum of the little ones thinking they don't see the big one because daddy don't don't want her to be here. And I gotta keep explaining. No, that's not it. I want her to be here more than you do. I miss her more than you do. I've known mm -hmm. her longer than you have, and I hate to tell you, but I love her more than you do. It ain't that I don't want her here. It's that she don't want to come here. But I can't say that part to them because that's crushing to a sibling who wants nothing mm -hmm. to do but adore the other sibling. <laughs> but once again, I have to be somewhat understanding. This is trying to be a, a level-headed and grounded individual. I have to give my oldest some type of understanding because once again, you're going through this New puberty thing, new emotions, new things. So all I can do is pray about it, continue to try to do the good things I'm doing, and continue to move forward because I can't allow that to inhibit me and make mm -hmm. me into an individual who I don't want to be. And when I see that happening, that's what causes me to have more anxiety and shit because I know I'm allowing myself to change based on some shit outside of me that's outside of my true control. At a certain point, as a parent, we got to understand a lot of shit we got to control over. A lot of shit we got control over. But it's a whole bunch of shit we have no control over. And once that once that shit is allowed at a certain point to get to a certain point, it's hard to get any control or any bond or anything back. It takes a long ass time. Now, talking to my peoples, the older peoples, in time, things will change. When she gets older, when she gets grown, Cool. I understand that. She'll see shit on her own. Yeah, on her own understanding. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but still, though. Yeah, right now. What if, I don't what if guys... Like, my thing is, I, I live in reality for me, and I live in the ground. In fact, that no man knows a day or time. Mm. I may not hear, be here when you reach that understanding and point. You feel me? I want to be here when you reach the understanding and point so I can be privy to your love again. Because that shit fucking matters. So I find myself now. She don't love you, or do you think that it's more like she's going through something, and like because she don't know how to process it, she does like a lot of us do, and like it's like, well, I'll push away the thing that's uncomfortable just because it's uncomfortable. Like, nigga, I don't know because once again, it's hard to tell my household, because my household functions differently. You know what I mean? I can see my my oldest in my house, my my middle baby. I can see her going through that at a certain at, at her certain point. You feel me? So I recognize that then. But to a, to my oldest, who I'm not around, mm. and I barely talk to, and I know the parenting style on the other end, it's hard to dictate and tell because I know how you used to sound, and mm. I know how you sound now, and I know me. And how I be sounding and how I can sound and how I used to sound to people who I didn't even want to really talk to. I was just doing it just to just to do it because I know someone just told me to do it. 
Right. I understand. Mm-hmm. I, I know, but you feel me? Like, and my kids are my kids. You feel me? Like, it's it's part of me and every one of my children. Every there's a lot of mannerisms I have, a lot of ways I have that's unbeknownst to them, but they do it too. And it was nothing taught, it's just inherent in them. And I just be like, damn, good. I can't really get mad at you because you got it honest. Right. And that's an old ass saying, but they get it honest. <laughs> I see each each parent, me and my oldest mother, I see her mother and her more and more as she gets older. And that may be because you you with her around her more and more now. You feel me? Once you yeah. hit your puberty stage, start going through your womanhood stuff, you want to stick around mama more. Got to be understanding as a man about that. And as a father, got to be understanding about that because if my father was around and I hit my puberty stage, I would want to be around my father more. So, for my girls, I understand that shit. Cool, it don't hurt me because I understand womanhood, woman, you want to, you learn and growing. Cool, I can't teach you certain shit by being a woman. But I'm a father trying to be in his children's life. What every person says is a good thing to have in your life. Balance, both parents. Balance, both parents. Every woman, every woman who didn't have a father growing up has, don't want to be, hate to be the one to say it, but most women who didn't grow up with their father have some issue with men. Some mm-hmm. underlying issue with men. You feel me? Like it could be a dad, dad issue or, or whatever. It's some underlying issue with men or self esteem or something. I hate to be the one to say it. Say what you want, comment what you want. I'm sorry, but in my life, whatever I, what I've experienced dealing with women I've dealt with in my past who didn't have a father in life, there's some issues there. And it stems from not having a fucking father. Right. Sure, it's other traumas there, but that was a big ass trauma. I want to avoid that with my goddamn kids because I want to be in their fucking life. Right. But I be feeling like I be I be made to feel like I'm not trying to fucking do that. When I know and my God's honest truth, motherfucker, I'm trying to do that. I ain't trying to buy you everything in the motherfucking world. You made all the work, won't you? I'm gonna fuck. Some shit you don't need. That's what I believe. On the other end, they'll tell you whatever you want to hear. Give you whatever you want. So when you a certain age, when you 11 and you had a cell phone, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I won't get you that till you turn teenage because you lose. You can't keep up with your glasses. Fuck, I'm going to get you a cell phone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fuck, come on, come on, my pocket with $100 for an electronic device and you can't keep up with the thing that you need to see. <laughs> yeah. Don't make no sense to me. But how you going to die? I think about shit you, keep the app. you can't see you I grew, I grew up, I ain't grew up, I'm going to rephrase that. We all grew up a certain way. I never grew up having every fucking thing, but I want the brokest motherfucker either. So I learned how to appreciate shit, get shit at certain times when it was time for me to get them. If it, if it wasn't time for me to get it and I didn't exhibit the responsibility and skills that my mother thought I should be doing to receive any of these motherfuckers, I ain't get it. When I got to the point, certain age, and I kept one stuff, and my skill, my responsibility level and skills won't won't show in that. I was told, get yourself a fucking job. You get your own mm. way and do what the fuck you want to do with it. And I was at that's 14, what they told you know? me. So what I did, motherfucker, my brother could take it. I got a goddamn job, <laughs> and my brother been working since. So those those qualities that I wasn't showing, I was made to show because I got a goddamn job and I had to learn them early. No, that's real. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot there. I think that the main thing, though, um, offline, I got some things I want to run past you and see if you're open to it. But in general, I, I would say you're doing a good job. Keep knowing that you're enough. Keep knowing that, like, it's when you stop caring and when you stop trying and when you stop like making efforts in any endeavor that like, that's when the problems really arise. So like the rest of it is like part of the journey that's supposed to happen. Like, like we're parenting, like we're uh-huh. those dips and those phases and those eras and times where like shit is really great with your kid. And then shit is like, the hell is going on right now yo am i in the twilight zone but i think like 
in some form or fashion. It may not be that specific form that you're experiencing it, but I think all parents go through it. And I think that's why it's really no guidebook <clears throat> parenting. It's more yeah. like a guidebook to being a good person and then you parent based off of whatever makes the most sense to you and your child in that situation. You know what I mean? Because parenting is so fluid. Like you literally can go through like 13 different situations in a day and they all be very different and require very different approaches and very different whatever. So it's like, it's no way you got to be like this because yeah, in this moment that might make sense, but like tomorrow for that situation, I might have to be a different way. So I think it's just like, as long as you're making those efforts and you're trying to like, come from a place of love and not you know what i'm saying anything else i think that's the key so you're doing a good job <clears throat> trying there and like in general on on everything that we talked about so far i think the key is just that same energy is like like you would tell somebody else like just keep pushing like it, it's i gotta keep pushing it's when you stand still that the shit passes you like as long yeah. as you're in the race, as long as you're um making the the strides, then you're constantly progressing. You know what I'm saying? Even when even if it's like a millimeter at a time, like you're not standing still. So like it means that whatever's happening right now ain't gonna keep happening because you're gonna move past it. But if you stand still, then you're just going to keep on experiencing that same thing. And it's going to keep building and building and building and building. So I think like you got the right attitude of just like that. I was at a hair's pace. Now I might be at a snail's pace, but I'm still like plugging along. I'm, uh -huh. not, like, I'm not like at no standstill or like, oh, well, me throw in the towel here. No, nah, like, fuck that. On, on all these endeavors, I'm going to keep on like pushing forward and I think that's the, really all you can do in a lot of situations in life man like um yeah um yeah um I'm gonna do the intro here but hold on to be honest like we probably I don't know this might be one of them pods where it's more like a pod hold on for your intro <laughs> hold on for your intro yeah. I just want to say before we intro I share personal stories not not for not for empathy, not for sympathy. Fuck all that shit. I share my personal story because I know there's other motherfuckers out there that's experiencing the same shit I experienced. But don't think nobody is experiencing this shit. So a lot of motherfuckers think they're the only motherfucker in the world having shit happen to them. And don't you have to explain yourself because please believe like this was not part of the podcast. This was we were already talking and like just talking as brothers but I could just feel like I felt like it was resonating with me, so I just felt like it was some of them things that like might hit with somebody else and might at least edify yeah, right. and make them know the dang crazy or like, hey man, I, I I can understand or somebody else is there with me, so that's why this, yeah, that's why this pod has kind of turned this way. But what's up, guys? Welcome to the partner show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can. Join in on as always on one third of the partners, your boy Tiz, and I'm along with other third of the partners. Uh, the Padawan here, even though I wasn't talking that much, I was just letting my man, uh, let, let my 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 people's vent and everything. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna carry my iPad to the truck because I really need to smoke. <laughs> we do the pie and they don't come back. But I'm the other third of the partners, Padawan here, and I'm along with. Dramatic pause, the greatest person, the greatest parent ever. <laughs> What's happening, man? It's your boy facing the place somewhere in the middle of this motherfucking race, but I guarantee by the end I'm gonna win this bitch. What's happening, fellas? What's going on this week? Man, uh this one of the weeks, man. Uh so like yes, the whole docket and everything, but we kind of just was talking and uh like I said before the intro, um if you were we're here before the intro and you taking the time to listen up until this point, then you kind of already know what I'm talking about. But, uh, you know, Face was just kind of giving us a rundown on what he's been going through this week. Um, and as y'all know, we always be checking in and shit. And uh, so, yeah, man, this might be one of them pods where we just kind of be talking. Uh, so 
as always, join the conversation and we'll see where this goes. If we get to the docket, cool, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, um, as I was saying before the intro, uh, I think that that keep pushing is like the theme of the week. Uh, Gotta keep pushing. Yeah, man. Um, it's been a real wonky week for me. Um, and this probably going to be the most personal part for myself because I'm probably going to have to reveal more of myself than ever to have this conversation with y'all. But uh, I'm at a good enough place, I think, today. I've only cried once a day, so I think I'm I'm, I'm pretty chill and shit. Um, but yeah, so my week, fellas, uh, started on Saturday, actually. Um, y'all know we were supposed to go live and shit. Um, I'm in the crib um, getting videos together and shit, and uh, we get a I get a group me first and then a text. So like, y'all know what I do for my profession. I ain't gonna get too deep into it, but just let's let's just say I uh, I work with youth. I teach youth. I mentor youth. Whatever you want to call it. I coach youth. I, that's my profession. I I, I build youth and 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 help youth lives to grow. Uh, y'all know what I'm talking about, fellas. But you know whatever. That ain't the important part. Um, but I've been doing this uh, as a profession since 08. So I done, you know, had a lot of different kids that I've now seen grow to adulthood or that I that have left my two religion and I like in their own lives, whether it be through high school, college, or, you know, some of them got their own careers and kids at this point. Um, but uh, so... Me and getting the videos together on Saturday and shit. And uh I get a group me in my uh actual job tech service or whatever. And then the wife come. She got this look on her face and she like, come here, let me just hug you. So I'm looking and I'm reading. So one of my uh kids that I used to work with or whatever, he got murdered Saturday night. He is 17. Uh, looked at the news report or whatever. Hard to really tell if it's a robbery, some gang stuff. I, I don't know, but he ain't no more. So I'm processing that, man. Like, this kid, he's one of the... Like, there are some kids that you know you get for, like, one or two years, or, but this kid in particular I have been with, I worked with him for four years he came to me pretty rough you know what I mean but by the end of that you know my, my time working with him he, he was on the right path he was ready to get you know what I'm saying he was ready to start working in his classes he was like avoiding distractions outside of school you know what I mean and uh, so yeah Shit hit hard. So, you know, obviously we ain't go live shirt and all that. So I'm processing that. Now, y'all know, like, my part of my shit for my uh, anxiety disorder and my PTSD and shit is, like, it, it, even my depression, like, a lot of it is triggered around grief and, like, loss and, like, fear of that. Um, so shit had me fucked up. You know what I mean? So I'm going into Monday. I go to work Monday or whatever. Shit is a fucked up day, to be honest. But I push through the shit. I get home. I walk in the house. And wife got a weird look on her face. I'm like, what the fuck wrong with you? So, you know, like I immediately go into husband mode. Like, yo, what's wrong? Why you look like that? Who, 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 like what you going through? Like what's what's happened? I don't know what to think at this point. You know what I mean? Because I done me and her been texting doing all the day and earlier that day everything was cool. So I'm uh -huh. like, what happened? Like what's wrong? Like are you hurt? Is something like what's up? Find out another kid I used to work with. This kid he done, he an adult now. He 24, 25. You know what I mean? He been done with college, all that. This kid done committed suicide, bro. 
With a double well, so I, kid with so a, that that's not dog related dog. to he had his head on straight. I thought I had talked to him a couple of years ago. You know, was trying to work with him to get him to come back and talk to some of the kids I work with now. That type of thing, you know what I mean? So shit was cool. So now I'm really fucked up. You feel me? So I'm out of work Tuesday. I'm out of work Wednesday. Wednesday midday. You know, me and the wife have dealt with this kid and, and know these kids. So, like, she's going through the same shit as far as the grieving process. You feel me? But Wednesday midday, she come and she crying. But it ain't like the other two cries. You feel me? You know what I mean? Like, it's a it's a different cry. Like, so I'm like, what the fuck is happening now? Like, yo, what's, what's, what's going on, B? So with this week. I'm talking to, so I'm looking at. I'm like, yo, what's wrong? Why you look like that? Why, why are you crying? Like, what, what happened? Are you just, is it just you know the buildup of everything from the week already? Did something else go on? I'll find out, man. The dude, the kid that had killed himself, man, had that Monday, like that Monday, like he killed himself the Sunday night. Found, I found out about it that Monday. But that Monday, he would have been facing charges for, like, assault on some of the female kids that I used to work with. Oh, shit. Came up with. So then that added a whole nother layer of just, like, fucked up in this to this whole... Oh shit, bro! Like I'd have had two panic attacks this week after not having none since like May. That none that was really a real panic attack. You feel me? Like I'd have had like my appetite jacked up, niggas. Like I had hallucination yesterday. Oh shit! Like, bro. But it's all good. I'm, you know, I got the, you know, the, the psychiatrist and the therapy. I got the good insurance, so that's all good. I'm, I'm on the road with that. I ain't got that ball rolling and shit. Probably gonna end up back on meds, to be honest. Uh, yeah, but uh, I think that's the thing, though. Like. You really got to keep pushing, man. Like, you can't let... <clears throat> you can't... You can't let the... The shit that's like... That should stop you, stop you. Obstacles, man. Not even yeah. obstacles, bro. Like, because this ain't no... Like... I don't know it how just, to explain some shit like situations. Like, we're, we're faced with it with his child, with, like this type of shit. Like these are these are things that ain't like it's not really happening to you per se, but it's fucking you up. It's having an impact on your everyday in a huge way because technically there's nothing like like to me an obstacle is like. I'm struggling to get a job because of the decision that I made and da 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 da. You feel me? Like that's the right. I'm, yeah. I'm struggling in my personal everyday. I I can't. I I'm inhibited. But I feel like in these situations, like somebody else is really kind of. They're the actual direct impact, but the residual impact is so great. That is like it still feels like it's direct. If that makes sense, I hope I hope that ain't rambling. I don't really know how to say it in the right word. But like it's like you got your direct obstacles and then you have your indirect I yeah, mean, like indirect situation. Like it's more like what we was talking about earlier, like with bills and shit. Like that's an obstacle. Like that's a mm -hmm. direct thing that I have a direct effect over that I had a direct correlation to that. It was all me and that thing that 
cause this alignment and this whatever did this snowball uh-huh. some shit that's coming from an outside is shit that you can't really prepare for per se because you don't know it's coming uh-huh. like going into Saturday my life was pretty much cool. getting back to uh-huh. normal. I, w- I was you know going through normal stresses but it was like I was back you know y'all know I we had been rocking out I was at a good, uh-huh. a good place like uh-huh. And to have some shit that I ain't planned for rock me to the core. You know what I mean? Even face like he was buzzing off the new gig, you know, and then to have some shit like that with little mama, you know, rock him to the core. Like that shit that you don't foresee. That shit that you don't put into your calendar. So I don't know that that's an obstacle. I don't know that you can like really dodge it. Like an obstacle, you can dodge it, duck it move out of the way that shit you kind of just life be life and it, that's sometimes. more like a uh what you call it a gauntlet uh uh joust uh, uh mm. like you're going to feel this like there's no this is the this is sparta kick like you're going to you just got to eat this mm-hmm. there ain't no doc ducking dodging like obstacles you can hop over you can find a way around it you can get it you know what i mean what's that old song you sang when you was a little kid uh, too high, can't go over. Too low, whatever. Yeah, you know, little game go with down down little motions. You yeah. know what I mean? The kids do like that's obstacles. Like it's teaching you how to crawl, dodge, duck, it, all that shit. Shit like this, man. Like this week right here is like, all right, we just taking bricks to the face. Mm-hmm. You ever seen that movie Dodgeball? Where like yes, the obstacles would be the dodgeball, mm. taking them wrenches that nigga from the wheelchair was throwing. Like that's different. Damn, you can't mm. deflect that. Now you just gotta eat that shit. Like oh goddamn, that's metal. That is stainless steel, huh? That indirect curveball. Yeah, bro. Like I, I have leaked more water this week from crying than from sweating, and you know how much I sweat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn. This shit has been the worst and it's nothing that I caused, could have avoided. I just gotta feel it. But it's scary because it's like, it's bringing shit that I ain't never dealt with. Like, I ain't never, like, I like I see my granny all the time. But it's like a daydream type thing. It's like, I want to see her. I'm looking to talk to her. She's not saying anything. She's not really moving. It's just her face kind of vaguely there you know if that uh-huh. means... nigga i saw my dead co-worker yesterday and i don't mean like a daydream like a face like this nigga at the end of the hallway looking down the hallway smiling doing this normal greed like it like i'm looking at this motherfucker head to toe the, you're like your memory like it's it's almost like your subconscious is giving you a memory or something. Bro, to... You know how fucking scary that shit is, man. To see some shit that you know is not there. Mm-hmm. Can't turn that shit off. Like I'm looking. Like I, bro. Like I ain't. And the scary shit is like my granny died and she had dementia. So like I'm I'm already like terrified because like all right out of everybody in my family my granny probably i was i'm probably most like her at the Uh end like i grew up under her that was my first teacher a lot of her ways i have like we butted heads a lot because we were so much alike and i got a lot of her traits like my granny was like, I, I remember going through her papers. Like, she had this little gray box with all of her, like, important papers from her life and, like, old shit, old records and shit. And I seen her, like, IQ scores and shit where she got tested and shit. Like, Granny was damn near a genius. Mm. Same shit with me. Her career path, same shit with me. Didn't even, don't even know how I got there, but same shit. Like added to the like- thing, same shit. Uh 
good heart, but like aggression. Same shit. Love of knives and blades. Same shit. Like when I tell you, like she my my like my twin, right? But the scary shit is if you look at people with like those type of brains, like they they usually have some 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 shit. And she died seeing shit that won't dare and out of her mind for the last 10, 15 years of her life. Oh, yeah. So, like... I feel you. I'm terrified, bro. Like, and then, like, this fucked up-ass healthcare system we got, like... So, the last uh, psychiatrist I was with, I left her. Yeah. Long story. Talk offline. But, Uh my therapist. So, like, I have to get a new one, but like that pro that anti process is slow, slow. So now I gotta wait till like Nate's week to start the actual grief counseling process. I'm just now tomorrow having an appointment with the psychiatrist, and I was lucky to get that through the telehealth shit. Cause like trying to book an uh, actual in person appointment somebody right now is like you're waiting up to a month. Forever, yeah. So it's like I don't know that like this must week be the week of like partners test like like all right y'all keep talking that plug it along shit and and you know all that shit let's see if y'all gonna stand on it because god damn bro it's been a long fucking week man yes it has it's been a long week bro a long fucking week man um longest. Well fuck it, man. I'm gonna try to get into this docket. Uh yeah. And I feel like that kind of leads me into what I wanted to talk about anyway tonight. Um so like this week got me thinking, yo, um fuck is up with these young people losing their lives, man. Um obviously, you know, my experience this week with losing two both under 25, um, the death of PNB Rock, who was pretty young in his own right. You know what I mean? Um, it seems like the homicide and the suicide rates for young people are going up. And I'm just really trying to figure out, like, what's happening, bro? Like, I, I, is it the media? Is it mental health? Is it like anarchy and apathy? Is it troll? Is it young people just evil now? Our culture is just evil in general. Uh, yeah. I have a, what do y'all think? Like, what's happening, bro? I have a theory. And this is my theory. I think our society is infatuated with death and has a low, um, has low value for life. Just with Bro. everything. Everything. Oh, yeah. Everything. It's like life. We don't value life like we should or whatever. And I don't even think it's um, I think it's a growing thing. I don't think it's just today's society. I think this is one of those snowball effects over culture, over the over the span of like our lifetimes, probably even longer than that or whatever. It's just gotten to a point, especially. And now with technology, it's like technology increases things tenfold or whatever. It. I hate so, it. So, yeah, bro. And, and then, and then it's, it hurts me because I like technology or whatever, but when you got it on the common man or whatever, it just increases things tenfold because Whatever, whatever would have been not been on the news is on your timeline right then and there. Whatever, like, news story that just maybe it was just in some random city somewhere in another state, maybe even a whole nother country or whatever, it's blown up. All the news stories are blown up on your media, so you can't miss it. There's no the only way you can miss it is if you just tune the fuck out or whatever. And it's just everything. The music, music glorifies death. 
got dang like everything even the way we preach certain things are like as far as the culture it's like we more fair afraid of death than living life or whatever it is about the music man you preaching right there i like I, yo i've like really started like this week really made me recalibrate and start thinking about like what i'm in what am i taking in on a day mm-hmm. what am i listening yeah, like, to? what am i and it, 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 on the on the uh, the youth to situation, that, gotta be some to that drill music shit and shit, and like the constant young boy situation of like it's a, like it's normal to see death as opposed to it being like something that's shocking and like oh shit they it's they like, made oh. they they made suicide romantic. It's like mm-hmm. if you like they made it they made it like. They make death so intriguing and they're making death and suicide romantic. Like, and it's not, I don't want to put, I don't want to put blame on people that actually committed suicide or whatever, but like you commit suicide and then it, it blows up on media. Like if you have like a known artist like Mac Miller, well, I can't say Mac Miller actually committed suicide or whatever because he, he overdosed or whatever, but he used to talk about it a lot. He used to talk about death a lot or whatever. And and it came like um, Juice World. Juice World, he had like his songs sounded like those depressing songs that you would find you would sing in the uh, like drunk people would sing in the bar and shit like that. But if you really listen to his lyrics and a lot of these, a lot of these, I would say all these new age rappers or whatever that like they get into their emotions or whatever and whatnot. It's a lot of songs that's just straight up depressing as hell and they're hits. But if you really listen to lyric, the lyrics into it. And so uh, nowadays people don't really listen to lyrics, but subconsciously that subconscious is always listening or whatever. A and lot of music I, these days are made by mostly, and <clears throat> a lot of music these days are made by motherfuckers who's emotionally and in, not intelligent. And the majority of people who listen to their music are young people who have not developed to have that emotional maturity yet or emotional intelligence yet. So that shit from these older motherfuckers who are glorified going to these younger motherfuckers who want to em- emulate. Hmm. You hitting the, you hitting the nail on the head with that music shit, man. Yeah, I mean, like, I want to, I don't want to just say it's that, it's just that because that I, I agree there though. I don't want to just say it's just that because I, being an artist myself, I don't want to say, hey, I don't want to uh, limit the artist for expressing themselves because that's what music <laughs> is for, or whatever. It's the so I'm not going to musical artist gets. It sounds like what you're actually saying. Yeah, it's the, and it's not the artist. It's the it's the industry and it's the industry of it or whatever. Yeah. Why? Why is pitching at all costs and like the glorification of loss? Why is that? Like what? What is it that y'all think sparked that? Cause I I'm really lost as to when that when it happened, I just know that it's happened. Because when, more people pay attention to to negativity and loss than they do positivity and celebration. You look at how many people. You feel me? Like you look at how many people dro- go in droves to uh, uh, a celebrity's death or a celebrity's funeral. But look at how many people. Do show up to the same celebrities charity events or the ce- same celebrity celebration. The same numbers ain't gonna show up. It's a fascination with the dark side. You feel me? Like yeah, it's a yeah. growing fascination. It's always been some fascination with the dark side, but it, it's growing because it's now more publicized. You feel me? Like it ain't just the music; it's the media too. Because you gotta look at the target age ranges for a lot of shit that's put out. And as we all know, whatever the target age range is, you got ten years younger than that participating and watching the same shit. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers ain't paying attention to the shit that's put out, man. Or who or the eyes paying attention to it. A lot and of that, shit is targeting the youth. Yep. That's supposed to be for adults, but it ain't crafted for adults. You feel me? Adult topics 
are crafted in a way that it'll be acceptable to younger viewers. What it should not be. It's a lot of adult topics on cartoons uh-huh. or visual or, or things visually that are appeasing for children or younger ages that cover a lot of adult topics, but don't even cover the topic in its full in, in its full intensity. You know what though? I don't know. If you're gonna talk about some adult shit, the talk about the adult shit, right? Because, like, all right, so you think about a show like Big Mouth, right? Mm-hmm. If that show was on, say, Fox, right? When we were growing up, the parent could kind of control it. Like, they couldn't completely, but, like, there wasn't the ability to, like, access it readily once it was off. There wasn't, mm-hmm. like, when it was on, if your parent told you to leave the room and you didn't have a TV in your room that picked up that, like, you was fucked. So, like, the most you could do is maybe listen and try to piece together what was going on. But at that point, without the visual, it's kind of hard as an adolescent a lot of times to like really understand. So you still had that buffer. Like parents still have some control. What I'm looking at now is like every single kid, even mine, has a device in their hand. But 95% of those kids, the parent doesn't enact any type of control on that device. So the kid is accessing things that like used to be like you had some kids that would sneak it or whatever, but the average kid, like the majority of kids were not exposed to crazy as shit. Like the craziest shit we was watching when we was kids was like maybe in living color or the Simpsons. If you, Uh if you happen to have that kid in the class, like, and I'm talking about like, you're seeing kids as young as like, eight to 11 that are like experience like back then like most kids that i knew in that age range had not seen a porn just yet the, the few kids that had they were like in the one to to five percentile of the school and they were like the oh my god you know you know randy you know randy got a porn yep his uncle, his uncle had the tape and left it over his house last weekend. He got a oh, like that. It was like an outside of the box, not a regular occurrence. Now, like these kids have, yo, I have confiscated kids' group chats and seen some of the wildest shit that we would not post in our group chat. Uh-huh. And we push and fold it. The needs kids are younger than 14. You got you got to also think, too, that the parents, when it comes to technology. Are not smarter than the kid. Well, in my I just in, say, in, fuck being smarter. Can I just say a lot of parents ain't fucking parents no more? Can I go there? That's is that, that okay? I was. I, I was leading. I was leading to that. I was leading why, to that. Why? Like, all right. Your I kids was, on was, the tablet a lot. Cool. Mm-hmm. It's a good tool. What they doing on the tablet? How much are you interacting with what's going on on the tablet? Have you had any parental control? Are you spending time with the kid, talking to them and showing them around the tablet so that they understand what's happening on? <clears throat> Same thing on the phone. Same thing on the video game. Are you taking time with them outside of said tablet, phone, or video game to spend quality time with them and talk to them about life and give them advice and have them ask questions and answer those questions from a real perspective, not from a they got to fill in the blanks based off of whatever they done seen that they won't even supposed to be processing yet. Like, I, I, it's a lot of parents I see these days that are like, they're letting other things raise their kids and teach their kids lessons that should be taught first by them. Like there are certain things that I watch. So like you got those two classes of parents, you got the parents that's letting whatever raise the kid. And then you got the parents that are like, Nope, I'm still mama. I'm still daddy. We, 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 we going to hang out. We going to do this. I'm going to take you on this ride. We going to go show you this. We're going to take you to the museum. We're going to, Go to the park today. We're going to play in the backyard. We're going to roll around in the in the front room on the rug. We're going to like spend time time. And what I see the major difference is 
those same kids are learning the same lessons, right? But the way those kids are processing said lessons is completely different. Like you can have a kid that's both learning about sex at the same time. But if one is learning from a competent parent, a real parent, and the other is learning from whatever they're seeing in the group chat or on the internet or that they don't pulled up from some app or phone or ad or whatever the case may be from whatever they own. The difference is one is going to then be able to see through the BS that's propagated. The other is going to fall straight for all of the propaganda and falsehoods and is going to be making poor decisions. And, and it's like when you it's like knowledge is power, right? They used to tell us that when we was kids or whatever. You feel me? And like uh -huh. a lot of this over access is coming without the knowledge to actually understand it. It's like getting some shit from Ikea, but you don't get no instruction. You just got a bunch of screws and boards and metal rods and ran and a random Allen wrench. And then you got a screwdriver and then you got a screwdriver, but it don't look like it fit under the screws there. So you're not really sure what it do, but you don't got no instruction. Some people going to figure that out it's going to be a small amount of people that are going to, their brains operate in a high enough place that they are going to get it. They're going to be like, okay, I got this. Bum, 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 bum. But most people, if you don't give them an instruction manual, they're going to build a chair when it should have been an ottoman. They're going to build an ottoman uh -huh. when it should have been a couch. They're going to make a futon when that shit was a goddamn bed frame. So like you're looking at, the pieces, but you don't really know how they fit together correctly. And that's what a lot of these kids are seeing. Like they're seeing a lot of these pieces thrown at them in very enticing ways, but they don't know exactly the full context of how those pieces fit together. So they don't got the full picture. So they're making decisions based off just that little piece. You know what I mean? If I tell you, Hey, tomorrow you got 24 hours. You're going to start hustling. You're going to go do all this crazy shit that you thought you had to do because you ain't got that much time to live. But I ain't say you ain't got time to live. I just left it at that. Now I give you, you got 24 hours until you become a billionaire. Now you might have went out here and done some crazy shit that then got you in trouble thinking that, well, I'm out of here anyway. But now you got the rest of the information. You see what I'm saying? So like if you had had that information, Think about the smarter decisions you would have made. And a lot of these kids is in that situation. They're seeing shit and exposed to music, like you said. And they're watching shows, like Faye said. And they're watching movies. And they're in these on these apps talking to each other and sharing things based off of those pieces of information. But they're not realizing how it's going to impact them later. And then later comes. Because no matter what your decision the reward or consequence will happen. It's going to happen. It may be delayed. It may be really instant, but it's going to happen. And I don't know that our kids are quick to deal with said consequences or rewards when they actually come to fruit. Like. That, that reminds me of like that what T.I. said about his son. In his situation where he was talking to him, he was like, I already had to talk. I already talked yeah, to him. You had to talk, yeah. but did you spend time with that boy? I watched you mm. be on the road. I watched that kid be with Tiny all the time. Mm. I watched you propagate the same behaviors that he's now showing mm. without giving how much were you around to show him the proper context? Because kids don't ever remember what they just what they hear they got to see it uh -huh. the reason shit makes sense from a competent parent is because after the parent tells you that you then see them doing it the parent told you okay this how you change your oil then you saw them change their own oil and the car run well afterwards so you were able to pick oh the competent parent showed you how to throw and catch the ball you watch them do the motions that they were showing you and it's working for them every time oh but if you see if you have parent that says hey keep your ass out of the streets 
Don't be out here shooting off guns. You need to leave this shit alone. You need to make sure you're doing this. But then you watch said parent getting arrested for machine gun, talking to niggas crazy on the internet about how they're going to pull up. And they're out here in these streets. Well, I don't know how the kid gets another. Uh, like, I heard what you're saying, daddy. But I see you. And I want to be like you. Can't name a nigga king and don't teach him how to be one. You feel mm. like I think one of the biggest pieces of accountability a, a, da- a parent has to have, and I'm going to stay specific to dads because we men here, but I think the biggest piece of accountability got to be to your kid. Like whatever you tell them, be prepared to show them because if not, that lesson is in void. It's null and void. It's a waste. You you've wasted your time even doing that. Because you you you're telling them something that they're gonna sit there and be like, Well, I still want to be like you. So whatever you do, I'm gonna do that. And if you're doing the opposite of what you're saying, you leading them to where you don't want them to go. If you a drug dealer and you have a kid, you better be ready to stop selling drugs if you don't want yours to sell drugs. Otherwise, well. You get a little meech. Uh-huh. He didn't quite understand, but he doesn't know anything from his father other than what well, you was doing crime. That's true. I think we got a generation of cool parents that's being too cool. I'm tired of cool. We got yeah. to be comfortable again. When I was growing up, there was a love, there was a definite comfort and like, you know, obvious like yeah, peace that you get around your parent, but there was still an uneasiness of like, well, I gotta do right. Might lose it on me if I don't act right. Mm-hmm. Want to make sure that um, I don't talk back. I might want to make sure that I move with some respect and decorum. I might want to make sure that I do what I said I was gonna do. I might want to make sure that I'm handling my business on a day to day basis. Because if not, this person might lose their mind on me. Mama crazy. You feel me? Uh-huh. Or, or, you know, to those people that had one, you know, daddy ain't, ain't got it right. Like, they're, we're not friends with kids. And I think that's the problem. Like, I had kid friends when I was a kid. But once I became an adult, me and, me and kids ain't friends. Like, we have no relatable qualities that would make us peers or interact in a friend way. I can be a mentor, an uncle, a father, a uh, 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 confidant, a respected adult, uh, all of those things, a teacher, uh, whatever. But I can't be your buddy. What are we going to talk about? Don't get down by no goddamn, what they call them, the Bakugans or the... Mm. Or the mons, none of them. Uh-huh. Mons. I don't care about the mons. I don't care about them, 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 the Nintendo Switch. I don't care about no Minecraft or no Roblox. I don't care about none of that shit. I don't care about no Fortnite. So you gonna miss me with all the like we we friends as kids? No, we don't need to be cool. Ain't no comfort. You want some comfort, go lay down. You sleepy? Uh-huh. You tired? Well, if not, then let's get to work. Because uh, uh-huh. me as the adult, I know it's about to come down the pipe in the next year, three years, five years, seven years, ten years. So let's get you ready for that. But I ain't got time to be your buddy. My buddies is on the line right now. Hey, buddies. Hey. And all y'all my age are older. In every friend group I've had in my entire life, I've been one of the youngest. Meaning I'm not about to be out here hanging with no folk that I can't learn from or that can't edify me or that can't relate to the shit that I'm going through and we bounce ideas and learn and sharpen still, sharpen still. I can't be out here hanging with wood. I'm still. Mm-hmm. Well, um, what I was saying earlier about um, some of these parents I was just reflecting off of the, the calls I used to have, basically. Like, I'd be hearing, 
like a lot of times I'm talking to the if the if the parent is too old or or their kid that live with their grandparents or something like that, I'm talking to the kid trying to get the technology right, you know, to get the, the internet stuff right, uh, to tell them exactly what they need to do. And then they tell the parent. So it's like now, now if they were parents like you were like you in 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 base and all the parents that we grew up with or whatever they would have that fear in the child to say hey put everything up or they probably take all these stuff you know like take the tablets and, and the phones and put them up somewhere or whatever but and they have ways you know that you can actually go in and cut things off and cut off the internet at a certain time but if you got a kid that's smarter than you with technology and you don't realize it yet or whatever they can find a way to get around those those um those provisions those internet provisions or whatever to get back on or whatever so well, and that's well, why i, but, I but, said but, that's but this why i disagree from personal experience mm -hmm. i got a kid that's smart enough to get around all the shit i put on and has seen adult themed things with me and his mother but is knowledgeable enough for one based off of me and his mother and then also is respectful of himself and his me and his mother enough to not step over certain bounds because of that you feel me mm -hmm. like face could have what? his kids in the house all day on their tablets but he ain't got to go behind them and worry about them being on some weird ass app or site, even if they know how to get there, just because they respect him. They respect themselves. They've like he's instilled enough things in him in them outside of that tablet where they understand protocol and like appropriate times and things like these are things that kids will not learn if you don't teach them. A lot of parents ain't teaching it. So, like, yeah, you're going to get a bunch of smart-ass kids that's going to sneak behind their parents and override all that shit and going to jailbreak shit and going to be like, man, fuck this. I'm watching mm -hmm. everything. What you mean? I'm turning this whole phone into a fire stick. We getting everything. But what is what is going on with the relationship with the parent and their kid that the kid feel that they got to sneak around on their parent? Let me, let me put out another point. Um, some of these parents don't even want to be parents. A lot of these, uh, uh, I want to say some, I, I say a lot. A lot of these parents are parents off a of circumstance. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. Now, don't get in the place that there's a lot of people, their parents off circumstances. And there's a lot of them that take in that responsibility and say, well, it happened and I'm going to be a parent. And it actually makes them a better person. But there is a astounding amount of people that are parents by circumstance and continue to be the child. And they end up pushing that child along with maybe their, their parents or something. But they're mentally not there yet to be a parent or whatever. Not making no excuses. Just saying the situation and, and, and just saying that this could be a reason for another factor in the increase of these situations with these kids, because you got a, isn't that, isn't that, that, um, it's how to say it's off. It's often we will see a parent somewhere and you can't even tell it's the parent. You, you can't, you can't tell if they like brother, sister, 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 Mother, sister, you know what I'm saying? Daddy, sister. I mean, daddy, <laughs> daughter. I'm I'm saying all the pronouns and shit wrong, but y'all get what I'm saying. Sister, why? Yeah, yeah it's not all that shit. I'm saying all the wrong shit. Y'all get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Oh, whatever. But they they go in. Maybe later on in life, they end up correcting themselves, and they and and they figure out, hey. I really have not been a parent or whatever. And it might be at the, and it might be at a point 
a lot of times it might be at a point where it's too late. Mm-hmm. The child has already grown up with you acting that way. So that's what we're expecting uh, um, um, in general. And so when you try to switch up and be the parent or whatever, they're looking at you like, what the hell you mean? I know you that. haven't been acting this way. You haven't you haven't cared you about mean? any of this other shit. New, so what new, do you mean? New mom, who this? Yeah, like how can I even <laughs> respect that or whatever? So now that I got in trouble or whatever, now you want to pay attention to me or whatever. You thought, you know, just put me in front of the TV. I have that's parent on autopilot. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Or whatever. So it's it's a lot of that going on, plus technology, plus, you know what I'm saying, just plus music and its influence with it being more about more about death than love and life in, in general. And then and then get me wrong, this is coming from a person that loved that type of music or whatever. But I'm at a mental state that I can listen to that and I can look at that as entertainment or whatever. I've always looked at rap music like I'm watching a movie, like uh, like like I'm watching like an action movie or a home movie or, and stuff like that. I can I can differentiate from life and entertainment. You can part with Yeah. But a lot of these kids. Man, for example, NBA young boy fans, they are the most, they a different time type of fan base, bro. They they a real different type of fan base. And then you listen to the music, and I mean I can see how that's appealing to people, or whatever, and, and whatnot, but man, like that music about it's something about that music or whatever. It's like all I hear is this nigga is going through shit after shit after shit. There's no good shit out of it. I don't hear no light at the end of the tunnel. Nothing like that. At least like, you you know, in some and a lot of, you know, rap albums back in the day, you, you hear some problems. You'll hear like situations they gone through, whatever. But you're going to hear some light. Like, like, right. you're gonna hear some party music. You're gonna hear some, some good shit. You're gonna hear a love song. You're gonna hear something like that. Some positivity somewhere, somewhere, or whatever. But what would consider the party song, or what would be the positive, a good song? He's still talking about killing niggas and ops and 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 all kinds of shit. And my baby mama don't understand me, and all this other shit. And, Remember, or whatever, they're taking kids away from it. Whatever, oh, nigga, you saying all this negative shit? I can understand why <laughs> you don't want them around. But it's it's a lot of that, man, and it's a lot of entertaining entertainment being the auto parent, basically, mm-hmm. or, or, or in, in, in general. So don't be an auto. Yeah. So. It's it's a lot of that, and it's now it's like I said, it's society in a whole. Like we gotta, it's like we gotta hit the reset button or something, that's jump on a whole nother console or something. And that's where I leave it at. Like, what do y'all think we can do about? Like, is is this something that is we can intervene and like curb or is this something that we have to just kind of let ride out and play out and just see what happens I wouldn't say intervene or curb I would say at least put the knowledge in and put the time in um that's that's a lot of things that's a lot that's what's missing a lot of parents are too busy out there trying to chase the bag and not spend mm-hmm. time with those kids, them same kids. So even though you providing, you ain't provide. Exactly. You got to we spend about- that. You got to spend that time, um, and put that time in. The patience ain't there for a lot of parents. The time needs to be made. Being a parent helps you grow as the adult, but also. 
helps your child grow to be a better adult than you could be. Um, it's one thing to try to provide for your kids to make, make sure they have everything you didn't have. But don't forget about making them a better person or at least instilling in them the tools that they can use to become a better person. That's what's missing, I think. Because a lot of kids out here are wearing the best, but they ain't acting the best. Big fact. You preaching there, brother. Put that time in, man. I, I, I can't say it no better. Kids love what they got instead of loving who they got. Mm-hmm. No. Put that time in. Big fact. I think I think the best thing we can do um, to, to tell you the truth, I mean, it's a part where, yeah, you can say that because you can't you can't change a whole society overnight. So it is one of those things we kind of have to ride out. But at the same time, we can intervene and y'all intervene, intervening right now, having these conversations and just being a good parent and being an example by default or whatever like it it's and that's another thing children are not stupid they are sponges or whatever so if you get enough examples out there or whatever that say hey this is a different way of thinking you know what i'm saying like that's gonna always help you you can't do but what you can do yourself pretty much so and I mean, and at the same time, if it was a way to change society overnight or whatever, it would probably be something um, unethical in the long run, <laughs> like in, in general, like it would probably be some unethical shit that you just can't do because like. You can't change society overnight. There's always going to be disagreements or whatever. And you can't just tell somebody that their disagreement is wrong. So the, the best thing we can do is ride this out and just be examples and intervene when we can. Like, I mean, I know you're going through a lot this week, Tiz, but you're doing the work. Just you being at the job yourself, you're doing the work. Now, there's certain things that we just can't control because that's life and that's how the universe roll or whatever but it's like you said you guys you just got to keep pushing and just and and be keep being the best you can be and the best example you can be because these things are going to happen whether we like it or not like there's always a time even when you're at your highest moments or or right now that like the devil's going to put in a curveball he's going to put in something to distract you he's going to and it's like i said about emotions before you know you get too happy you let your guard down you get too sad you get complacent you stay in one spot you don't you don't move you don't you don't go forward you get too mad you do something stupid you know what i'm saying so i I think that's that's all we could do pretty much as as a people pretty much i ain't gonna lie that's well said by both of you, bros, man. Uh, I, think that's where we, I think that's a good place to leave it. Uh, I got a feeling we're going to be revisiting this conversation, sadly, um, in the future. But here's to hoping that you don't have to. Not, not sadly. Don't say sadly. I'm going to tell you why. Because us continuously putting the conversation out is... It's us intervening and helping. So, you know what I'm saying? We are, y'all here doing the Lord's work. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, but with that being said, man, uh, I was looking at the docket and I noticed it's only a few things uh, this week after mine. So instead of ending on such a sourpuss note, uh, what do you say to... Let's do these little, what is it? One, two, three. You said we do these little faux fuckeries. Well, you know how I feel about it. What is this? Episode 94. Good Good 
y'all don't even know it, but I was riding around smoking <clears throat> while we were talking because yeah, that's how but... I decompress, <laughs> yeah. especially when we have topics of anxiety and everything like that. Ooh, boy. And uh, yeah, and I, I'm not even. This was a hell of a Zoloft Lexapro week here, boy. Yes, yes, sir. I yes, mean. sir. <laughs> yes, sir. God. And I, I ain't even gonna lie. This this first topic is gonna give me some anxiety, man. And y'all gonna have to put me on. But uh, I think Tiz, you probably put this up here. Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears had a PSA. Yeah, have y'all seen this? I know they had made a statement, and when you put that up there, I was actually trying to look for it, but I haven't seen oh, it. Oh, but, it. And I've heard of Aries Spears. But you got to look on YouTube, and there's some people who have it, like, they're reacting to it. So yeah. they have it pretty much in its entirety, but a lot of people have cut the cringiest parts out, and for good reason. So That's, that's another reason I didn't want to hear it. I'll give y'all the setup and then kind of let y'all you know, I just wanted to hear y'all thoughts on it. I know I've been think I had some thoughts on it to myself, but yeah. So back in the day, maybe somewhere between maybe five years ago or so, five somewhere in the past ten years, Aries Spears and Tiffany Haddish, before they were before Tiffany Haddish kind of like reached her point where everybody knew her and she became a household name, etc. Um, her and Aries Spears had done this video um people are calling it a psa but i don't really know it's like a it's a sketch um, mm -hmm. and basically the premise of the sketch is watch who you leave your kids with so in the sketch ironically yeah, this plays uh a mother who keeps going out for random reasons whether it be to the club or to the store or whatever but she keep asking her uncle to watch her son. Now this little boy is the in one of the scenes he's in his underwear playing on the floor with like some cars or some trains or something and like Aries is playing this uncle that's acting like Bill Cosby and he's looking at the kid through like he done cut out holes in the newspaper he's looking at the kid through the newspaper and at one point there's a scene in it with like they're in the the kid is in the bathtub and Aries like falls into the bathtub. There's another scene where the kid is where the kid is like rubbing baby oil on Aries and Aries rubbing baby oil on him or something like it's oh so you're it, talking about the actual video sick to watch as a father. So now. Because yeah. of this video, right, the little boy that was in the video, his mom and Tiffany Haddish were friends. And apparently Tiffany Haddish had the, the, the kids are now coming out. So the kid that's in the video, the family is coming out and saying that they were groomed and sexually assaulted by Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears at that point, And that um, the mom was told that the video that was being shot was some type of a pilot or something for Nickelodeon or like Disney or one of those kid networks, which is why she allowed Tiffany to like watch the kid and take the kid with her. Um, for me, it, it went into three different directions in my brain as far as like what the fuck, but I wanted to get y'all thoughts on this fuckery. So you you're talking about the actual video itself. I didn't see that. Well, I'm talking like, about the video and the uh, the entire situation. Like the video yeah. itself. I described the video just so y'all had context on it if y'all hadn't seen it. But I've the, seen that. There's also the follow up and the backlash of like people canceling Aries Spears, people calling for Tiffany Haddish, people defending Tiffany Haddish and not Ari Spears. Um there's been several different angles. Have y'all, but are y'all even familiar with this? In the, oh, no, I I, I'm familiar. familiar. And I, I saw the video. I thought when well, you would say PSA, I thought they had did a response to the backlash. And that's what you were talking about. But I have seen the well, video. And I mean, they responded and said that it's not true. And that uh, 
the video was, you know, they've admitted to it being kind of in poor taste or whatever, but they weren't. They basically said that the uh, grooming and sexual stuff is not true and that da, 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 da. so that's what both camps, Aries camp and Tiffany Haddish's camp have basically put out. Um myself, the shit is bad taste, very poor taste. Um, cool. um the allegations regards true or not. Um no one's gonna forget. There's gonna be a stain on both careers. Um, mm-hmm. If they are true, I hope they get jail time. Um, if it's not true, unfortunately, lies like this stick to a person. Um, people don't want to be associated with people like that. Um, I think Aries even came out and said his career is his yeah. like career and then blow. Um, when you do anything in bad taste, it's never a good idea to involve a child because it's going to leave an even worse stain on you and even a worse taste, taste in the mouth of whoever digested that content. Um, it's sad Jeez, that it's out of it. the Jeez. only reason the video came out it's because Ari Spears said something about Lizzo. That that's the only that that's the only reason the video came out. So that 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 gives me stance to be like, where did the allegations come from? Did y'all mm-hmm. see an opportunity? Because the video, if the video is old as two thousand something, what gave you the strength to now come out and say something now? When the video was already out and on the internet, for it to be found, why now? I understand well, why now with the video being put out because the video is dirt mm-hmm. and the video is in poor taste. So anything to defend a popular superstar, the internet is going to get you. You feel me? They're going to dig up anything as far as dirt. But where did the allegations all of a sudden come out from? It was timed too perfectly for me. Um, it did immediately mm-hmm. follow him saying things about Lizzo. You are right there. You are mm-hmm. there. That kind, um, of, that kind um, of culture uh, hit mob will get you, boy. I don't want to come off as discrediting the alleged victims, but my just my skeptic in me, I got to look at timing. It wasn't like the allegations have been out there swarming and rumors out there about either one of these individuals tipping the head to show every space. These allegations of allegations of, of any type of mis, misconduct sexually. I don't think there's ever been a rumor or anything out there like that. So that, that leads me to say, like, so if Aries never said nothing about Lizzo, y'all would have never said nothing about this stuff happening. Y'all would have yeah, never said nothing about the grooming. Y'all that kept the grooming, y'all that kept that as a secret between y'all, it wouldn't affect the job that much. But now, the video out, y'all see that the public has something to say. So now you want to try to get a dollar off of it. Is it a money grab? Or is it yeah. actually you trying to seek some type of justice all these years? Now, not victim shaming or nothing. Some victims take. 10 decades to come forth with, with their trauma because that's how they process it. You it's all in the individual time. Right. But once again, you got to look at the timeline. Harry says something negative about Lizzo. Dirt comes mm-hmm. up about Aries. <clears throat> Tiffany Harris gets pulled in because of the video. Tiffany Harris is grooming and everything because she knows the little boy, little boy, the little boy's people. So. I, I, I don't know. I think the whole shit is sickening. The whole situation is sickening. And everything that comes out of media nowadays it, it, it is, is really sickening. There's really no positivity pushed out. Any, anything positive is outshined by the latest and greatest new man. negative shit. Bro. No one's pushing positive vibes out there, man. Like, I want, I want some media positivity. Like, you know, I mean, real positivity. I don't care what color positivity it is. 
shit. I, I just want to see some positive mm. shit. I'm tired of seeing murders, tired of seeing molestation shit, tired of seeing rape shit. I mean, report on it. Cool. Yes, we, we need to know about it. But add a little red sunshine on that bitch too. Y'all keep reporting on negativity. It's producing more negativity, man. Like, what? give me some rays of sunshine media. Yeah. Show, show me some of this good shit. It, it's good shit happening out there. I know it is. Y'all know it is. There's new, there's new discoveries, new inventions, new technology, new, new, new horizons, big bright new shit we can look forward to. But all y'all want us to do is focus on the shit that's gone and the shit is being taken away. Come on now, it's profit and positivity. Yeah. Um, new gray. <coughs> Damn right. That shit that has shown five five. My kids ask every time they get in cock. Dad, can we listen to that? Who listen to that? Not a curse Every word. day they got listen to two songs. Five five King Defamation. Bro. That's my shit. Yes, information. Big cap is my shit, but you know. You know, we can all do the Toga shit. I um this is how I feel. Um ironically, there was a PSA about who you leave your kids with. And they left their kid with T- Tiffany Haddish. I kind of feel like Tiffany Haddish mm-hmm. just got the short end of the strong in this situation. But that, I, that. No, I don't. I don't. You know, but, so I would, but I would say, I said I kind of. But at the same time, looking at that video or whatever, thinking about video editing and everything. Right. Like, and how much you got to actually put in to edit videos right. in general. So nobody in the midst of like the editing, recording it, all that. Y'all all just thought that was funny? Like some like. Yeah, you could have changed the camera angles or something. You could have just changed. You you could have not done it. Like I would think uh, after a while doing it, I would feel uncomfortable doing it. But yeah, and I mean problem with Tiffany that the you didn't have to do it. Like you brought somebody like never ever, first of all, would I have my kid in his underwear for anybody seen with some man. Yeah, the hell fuck. That's first of all. But second of all, never have a never would I ever have somebody else's child Shit. in their underwear. Like you're under my jurisdiction. <clears throat> I need to treat your child as good as, if not better than mine, to make sure that like because your press is good for somebody else. Like I can take responsibility for anything that happens with my child. I can't take responsibility for this. Like, let me make sure that I'm t- handling this with precious care. That's somebody else's kid. Mm-hmm. Like lawsuits. Like Jeez. whether you like, and she, and I think in one of her releases or whatever, she said that like she wasn't necessarily on the set or on the scene when some of those scenes were shot. As far as him and Ar- the little boy in Aries, but my thing, mm-hmm. if it's somebody else's kid, why are you not? on the scene there. every single shot i would have been on the phone with kids mom like hey all right this the next scene they about to set up all right which this is the what they think about this is what they asking what do you how do you feel about this you cool with this are right, you sign off on it all right okay you know what i mean like you don't have power of attorney you don't have no jurisdiction to make those decisions to say yeah this kid can be naked or have naked or any type of naked with a grown man. Okay, let, me ask you, let me ask you this real quick. Or anybody else. Like, how dare you have that kid? Like, the only person that's supposed to see a kid with their clothes off and, and, and is like a doctor. Let me, let me ask you this. If it's like, I got to yeah. see your shit because fuck it, you, you sick or you got something going on and I got to be a parent to see if I need to take you guys to the hospital or something. But you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not. That should not be a normal thing where you got a kid in his drawers in front of anybody. That's that's not a thing. Mm. Let me ask you this. The parents knew about a, them going to record something for something. Correct? 
Correct. Keep it going. What, Accountability is everywhere. Come on. What what parent don't want to see what their kid was in? Bruh. Mm-hmm. What parent don't want to let me let me let me see? I want to see that. I, I want to see. And you're gonna be adamant about seeing what you mean. I can't what's going on. No, no question have been asked till now. Like what parent don't what want I don't give a like he I don't know what it is. What it is. I, I want to see my kids in everything. I want to if I if I can't be there, I want to see it. You better believe okay. You you respond for my kid, but I want to see the outcome. I wouldn't video it. I want to see my kid acting. I want to see whatever they whatever they want to see. And you had no, and if you did see it, you had no problem with them being in their underwear till now. The crazy part though, keep the accountability going. Because this video was out since it got shot or whatever. It just now became a thing that everybody knew about because of, you know, people going to track it down recently. But, like, the video was out there. It's just nobody was looking for it because one nobody thinking about it. And it, it wasn't, like, a popular video. Exactly. So I'm, like, so I'm going to just it, say it. was a thing that was already out there on the Internet. So people could have been watching it. It's just, yeah. So, I'm like, a, so somebody okayed it to be released. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Funny or die. And then the funny only die. person in that situation that has no culpability and no you said funny or die blame is that little boy. Yeah, I, I said um, funny or die is the Correct. platform they put it on. Correct. And then okay. funny or die, they after a while they actually took the. I will give it to them. They actually took that off. After reviewing it and everything, um, off of their platform, but it was out there. But I'm gonna just say, I'm gonna just say it. The only reason why this even was brought up is because Aerie Spears, ugly ass, said something about Lizzo. Can we just Aries. all agree that Aerie Spears need to shut the fuck up? A lot. Him, well, like, why are we? All right, here we go again. Where is Ja? Mm-hmm. Where is he? Ja. Where's Ja? Where's Ja? Now, Where's my ja? thing is, why are you going to Aries Spears and Faison Love and Lil Boosie and all of these random people that have no White. expertise in social matters and keep getting their opinions on these things? Like, why do we care what Aries Spears thinks about Lizzo? Aries Spears has Why do we care what Aries Spears TV. thinks outside of a comedy sketch or a joke that he's telling on stage? Like, he's not a philanthropist. He's not a philosopher. He's not a lawyer. He's not a doctor. He's not a, a archaeologist. He's not a sociologist. He's not any type of oh, in the sphere that would be giving us social commentary outside of a comedic stance and in, in a comedic forum. Him just talking, just giving his opinion should be relegated to him, his boys, the barbershop, whoever he interacts with in his personal sphere. Why do why is that news? Why is that a thing that we are? Why is Vlad asking him on to ask him about these people? Like what? The that's fuck? Vlad's hustle. That is Vlad's. But that go back that is- to what Faye said, people being attracted to the ignorance. You're bringing people on that you know have no real value in that the actual situation, but you know that they're willing to say something controversial and it'll get you clicked. This person will put their foot in their mouth real quick for me. Let me call them up. Yeah. And every fool every time. I'm like, did not the lumps upon your head from Zoe Williams teach you anything, sir? Shut yeah. up. You don't have to say it just because you think it. I tell my son that all the time. Just because it comes to your head, like your your brain, doesn't mean it has to become a word. It just yes, that's what you're thinking. Have that I thought. Was love you, shut the fuck up. But and even if you like that thought, enjoy that thought. But don't necessarily infect your issue or your whatever onto the world. And if you're going to do it on your podcast or whatever, cool. But it shouldn't be a thing where now your comments about this person, like, I never want to go viral 
off of talking about a person. If we go viral for something, I would like for it to be a conversation we're having about ourselves or about real life where we're giving opinions on actual life. And usually in those opinions, it's coming from a place of some type of expertise. Like if I talk on history is because I literally was a poli sci major and was studying history for a lot of my life. Same thing with biology. Now, if you take my ass out there in the physics, uh, I'm speculating like every other Joe Schmo on the street. But mm-hmm. you go into sports, maybe another one of my expertise. Like I've studied that health and wellness. I've studied that these are things that I can actually speak on with a level of competence. Every Spears don't know Lizzo like that. This, Every Spears is this, just a random person on the street that's like a fan, like anybody else. This is like, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Why is that an opinion that actually matters or or should be affecting the zeitgeist? It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. The it's all the speculation and it's it's all the just the noise around it. It's or whatever. Vlad and other interviewers like Vlad or whatever, they bring these people up there uh, or whatever for content, just to create content or whatever. Vlad knows that if he gets people to talking, sooner or later, it's going to be something out there that he can clip or the internet can clip and they can blow it up to make it viral. And and that's what he do. You know, Pat. Huh? I know Vlad. We care about Vlad because Vlad has enough cachet in the culture to where like people are going to pay attention to him, whether they like him, hate him, they're going to pay attention to hate him, or they're going to pay attention to like him. I get that. I even get kind of a little boosted. Like he's his popularity in his own field where he's an expert or where he's like relevant brings him cachet to where people are going to pay attention. Why did we pay attention to Aries Spears comments about anything? Aries it's Spears not, has not been tried to was a negative or comment. Not created something that has shaken the culture or moved any the needle on anything. It's, it's Mad TV. It, Let's be it, clear. He had Mad TV and a semi moment on Def Jam. And outside of that, Aries is not like that. Like people know him from Mad TV because of the impressions, but they don't know anything that he could. You can't name an Aries Spears project that then did something for you in the past ten years. So why it's would he to even care about what he said about Lizzo, much less yes. anybody else? Why yes, is his it. comment not falling into the obscure pile with people like uh, let's think, with people like Judy from Family Matters and shit like that? Like why? Like ain't nobody talking about what Judy think about what about Beyonce? I'll, I'll let Faith say what. Ain't nobody thinking about I'll... Judy. What the fuck I'll... is we thinking about Ari Spears all of a sudden? What where's Ja? Like, right, like Tiffany Haddish makes sense. I get why the backlash and the uproar and the commentary around it would make sense because Tiffany Haddish has become a a big enough star in her field where anything she does is gonna have some gravity to it from other fields. It's like it's just gonna happen. Why is that the truth for every spirit right now? Like, that's the thing that be killing me. We be getting our cue and social commentary out here in these streets from people that don't matter in their own expertise. I'm not I'm, listening I'm, to Neil deGrasse Tyson no more if he stops dropping bombs and teaching and dropping shit that I didn't know about astrophysics. You feel me? Like, that makes me feel like or give gravity to his commentary on other things because I know that the fact that he puts this much time and effort into this, okay, the fact that he is this excellent consistently in this, I know that he's willing to put the time and effort to think about what he's going to say about this. Now, do I necessarily give the same gravity to that as I, if he gives me relationship advice, am I going to give the same gravity to it as a relationship counselor? Hell no. (laughs) But I'm going to give it more gravity than the average person. Every Spears ain't put forth excellence in his field. That's like right now, Lil Pump coming out talking about Biden (laughs) and his political platform. Nigga, you ain't made a hit since. Let's get it. And I don't even remember that. 
Right. Oh. Who, yeah, who is this? excellent enough in your field to be consistent? Why do we care about your thoughts in the other field? Leave that shit where it belongs on Twitter to whoever follows you. If I don't follow you, it should not reach me. I, uh, I got an answer for you, sis. <laughs> like, unless I you are somebody who's big enough where it would reach me because your gravity is that of such. Now, I, Meek Mill, one of them niggas, I don't care how ignorant the shit he say is, it keep reaching me. But it makes sense to me when it reached me because he Meek Mill. I don't know why this Lizzo Aries comment came to me in the first place, much less for it to get to a boiling point with the community yes. online and the country to where now he's done got his shit dug up. You know, like usually we digging up cancelable shit on people that matter, like Chris Rock and Kevin Hart. <clears throat> why the fuck are we caring about Aries Spears? I'm 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 that I'm gonna go get fat and get more raccoon circles and go do whatever he's doing. That nigga that nigga Corey Hoker call him the gooey raccoon. Let that gooey oh, raccoon go back to his little hut and do whatever he was doing before he said shit about Lizzo. Wow, we tripping. I, I got but if but you give me a second jail for fucking with that little boy in his drawers. I don't care give if it's a joke or not, that shit ain't funny. Give me a second. I explain it. It's not Aerie Spears. It's not. It's not Aerie Spears. It's Lizzo. It would be. And and then I'll put in. I'll put in the play. It's 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 all Lizzo. If with Lizzo fan base, they're gonna pick up everything, and they're gonna run with it. And Aerie Spears, like you said, is not that famous. Of. His celebrity is not strong enough for him to survive the onslaught. And if you notice, cancel culture have been slowing up lately. It used to be a time where they could, whatever they say, they're on the chopping block or whatever. But now people are getting over it and then people are looking at it like this is fake outrage. So they calm down or whatever. It's now, it's all right. We got somebody we can sacrifice. To the internet god or whatever. And Aerie Spears, you've been sacrificed. It has nothing to do with Aerie Spears' celebrity, what he has to say, or or anything of any importance in general. And then on Aerie Spears' side, I was going to say that he's, of course, he's going to go on an interview with Vlad because he hasn't produced, like you said, since Mad TV. So he's going to pick any type of outlet he can to run his mouth and, and maybe I'll say some funny shit out of it that people going to appear to and they're going to be like, hey, this Aerie Spears guy is funny or this Aerie Spears guy is controversial or whatever. Let's put him on something. That's what he was thinking. No, what, But he, he, he didn't realize that he's digging a hole. Peep this. I'm going I'm to I'm rebut all of that with a couple of examples here. You ready? Mm. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the Lizzo argument, right? If it was Lizzo, every look at Lizzo, okay? Mm -hmm. Get a mental picture of Lizzo, okay? I got it in my head. I want it in my every head. Every single I got day, it. somebody online says something crazy about Lizzo. Mm -hmm. How many of those comments reach your timeline, Pat? Okay. Few. Okay. We're going to keep it moving. Usually, if it does, though, it's because it was some celebrity that is relevant. Cardi B said something or mm -hmm. or something like that. I'm going to move on to the next point. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when we talk about Aerie Spears, right? Aerie Spears, this all started maybe a year ago on Vlad TV when Aerie's first got his little Vlad interview, his first one. This is what I'm saying to you. What made... All right, think about how many people get interviewed on Vlad TV in a given week. That nigga dropped like 15 videos a day. All the time. Yeah. Maybe one or two of them are important enough for you to actually remember, click on, move up. A lot of them shits, when you really look at them views, them shits be like at 15,000 views, 20,000 views, because ain't nobody really checking for that artist or that 
producer or that mob boss or that whoever. Uh huh. Why the fuck we checking for Harry? That's the shit that I keep. That's the shit that that's baffling me. Who the fuck is this Aries army that started this shit in the first place to give him enough traction to where he's reached me? I hadn't seen Aries since watching the 5150, and that shit was a. I was like, hey, Aries Spears still around? Where did this come from? Mm-hmm. Nigga got beat the fuck up, was hot for like two weeks because he got beat the fuck up, and then I ain't hear about him no more. Like, no more, Pat. Like, this nigga was not. The only Aries I was thinking about was the Ram, and that's because my son is an Aries. My brother and sister are. I start, also. I start planning child birthday parties when I think of Aries. Not no Aries Spears. I, now, it's some shit here. Like, why? What the fuck made Aries pop again? Because I haven't seen a new special. That dry ass podcast ain't doing no numbers for him to, you know, usually any type of celebrity, they start off at like 40, 50,000 subs. Uh-huh. Even if you a washed up one, you got your core fan base from back in 1976. They gonna ride with you. It's 50,000 of them 50, 60, 60 year olds still alive. That's what, ooh, Tom Petty's got a podcast. Every shit is low as fuck. So what the fuck, again, is making him pop? And I ask that more, not... I don't even know that we can answer that. But to the people out there that keep clicking on his shit and, like, is getting it to my timeline, stop it. I'm a friend. <laughs> I, I don't think they're going to be in the midst of stopping it, but... That uh, Jordan me? Let's keep it. Get it on. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think though, uh, Tiz, the problem with us understanding this is that we're logical, and a lot of times with the internet, there's no logic behind it. It's all outrage. It's all let me find some shit so I can put up. Even with me putting up the good and fuckery, I'm looking for shit myself <laughs> or, or whatever. And Aries Spears just happened to be one of the topics today. But let's send Aries Spears to the same place we've sent Will and Jada to South Carolina with you all. <laughs> and Tiffany, I can't vouch for you on this one, Chief. You, uh, you on your own. Whatever comes, comes. But that was a dumb decision. Do some, do whatever you got to do to repent. But that you made to take that child out. Ain't nothing she can do to repent for me. Uh, you made that dumbass decision. You involved the child. Man, no coming back. Once you fuck over with a kid, you no coming back with me. Mm-hmm. So, and she, so she, my she, thing is, if y'all, if y'all let her come back, y'all should start letting R. Kelly music play on the radio again. R. Kelly music still. still let the me. nigga stay in jail. <laughs> let the nigga stay in jail for the rest of his life and then some. But if y'all let Tiffany Haddish come back with anything, with any anything doing with a child, shit need to be even. Boy, what if her next movie is Look Who's Talking For? Nigga, please. <laughs> with how things go today, I would not be surprised, sadly. Like, it's funny, but it ain't funny. I would not be surprised. Really might see that. Right. Yeah. 2026. Look who's talking for. Mm-hmm. Well, since we're talking about look who's talking and random people on the internet talking, let's get into another random on the internet that I have no clue how he got famous. Charleston White, y'all. Charleston freaking White. Everybody's favorite snitch. Hey! Boy, he's a dummy. Yeah, everybody's favorite snitch, man. Karma. Karma. All I got to say is karma. You go out here thinking you're holier than now and self-righteous and saying all this other stuff or whatever just down people now. A lot of times he do have points, but he don't have all he's 
all he sound like is just that old uncle. Actually, sound like an old auntie in, in the voice. Yeah. They just be complaining about stuff or whatever. Yeah, and, hey, and, no, 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 no. You're, you're out, yeah, yeah, out there making songs about shooting this up. And you're wondering why the youth is acting like that. Why you boy? He do look like that on. <laughs> like, and, you know, uh, that nigga is you in 30 years with a dad hat. Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> shut the you're hell telling me, up, man. You're telling me you don't see that. All right, I'm tripping. Hit me. All oh, right, shit. <laughs> I'm I, never ain't gonna saying, I ain't saying doppelganger type shit. Like you look like him, but y'all look res- y'all resemble. It's the like, Maybe like no, like it's bone structure, it's, it's like head shape, man. I mean, head shape, voice, man. like I could see that being like your uncle or something down the line, and you'd be like, man, that a bitch. That's my country uncle from down in Texas. There's some uncles I don't like, man. So oh, that you, Uncle Adi. Uncle Adi, you are my favorite uncle. You're as hilarious as hell, Uncle Adi. If you ever see this or whatever. Well, but Randall, this... we don't fuck with you. <laughs> fuck you, Randall. That's his name. Oh, I, I don't fuck with him so much. I don't know his name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back in Charleston, right? Um, after saying all this gangster stuff and claiming how much he knows about the streets, uh, Charleston White. After copying, after copping a twenty-five thousand dollar chain, after talking all that junk about how frivolous uh, rappers be talking, he bought a twenty-five thousand dollar chain with his face engraved in the chain with his favorite phrase, "Nana Nana Boo Boo." <laughs> <laughs> that's right, oh. Nana Nana Boo Boo. I, I that's. That's not all of it. That's not all of it. Is it? I, I put it up there. Oh, I don't think I put it on this list, but it, you could probably Google it and find it. But with his chain, he wanted to celebrate him getting his chain. And like, getting his chain. Yeah, ironically, just like a rapper would at a strip club. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, and at, while he was at the strip club, flossing his chain, getting a dance from one of the le- one of the, the dancers at the strip club, uh, he shot himself. He cheddar bobbed himself. Oh shit! Mm-hmm. I think she might have grinded a little too hard on that one, but uh, Bob has- man, this chain, man, that nigga Plaxico Barris himself. Uh, I, can I just say you should never be at the club if you are that paranoid that you are gripped up so hard that you shoot yourself. He he said in light of the PMB rock situation in which he said his own comments about that's why he decided to have a gun. But my thing is having the gun is not the issue. <laughs> it's the you're on several podcasts showing talking about how much of a gun and weapon expert you are and how you're certified and trained and all this shit but you don't have enough sense to take this to put the safety on you don't have enough sense to have it in a position on you or holstered in a way that it can't just be fired without you actually firing it like you have all of these so-called all this so-called knowledge yet you used none of it none of it them talk it don't walk it niggas i still believe you should snitch on people though but that's that nigga looks stupid as hell for this is see the problem the problem with charleston white is he's trying to He's trying to cross different boundaries. He's trying to live you two lives at the think. same time. Right. Like right. you, right. you want the rapper life, but you want to talk junk about the rappers. Right. That's living the life that you want. You sound like a hater. Choose a path and walk that shit, man. Either you go and stay with that because shit. Don't lead them down a bad path, man. The way the way he be talking, you would 
that you would think the last place he would be at is a strip club. And not not because he's holier than thou, but because he done said so much stuff about what happened to the rapper, you would think he'd be conscious about that. But at the same time, nothing, what happened to him ain't what happened to rappers. <laughs> it happened to him. It happened to Cheddar Bob, who's a fictional Cheddar Bob. character. Who's a fictional character that we probably like better than him. And, uh, and Plexico Barris. And football player. And then, mind you, the fo- football player, we're going to let him pass because he's a football player. He has some status has somewhere. I don't know who the hell wears sweatpants with a, with a pistol in it. Drawstrings are not usually the best holster thing to keep mm. shoot it's hard to keep keep the sweatpants up if you got a lot of stuff in your pockets Fact. if your sweatpants have pockets Fact. <laughs> whatever so yeah uh <laughs> charles man you, you you're on the list of people that just need to shut the fuck up i mean for it like seriously like seriously who are you it may be time to go lay down Chief. Charleston White. He's laying um, down now. He, he, I enjoy he, Charleston White, but... Mm. He be trying to do some good stuff in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he got an odd-ass approach about the shit he got to say. Um, I think he's looking for trouble. Um, I think he gonna keep looking for the shit, and it, the type of shit is gonna find him ain't gonna be the type of shit he, he claimed he's prepared for. Um, I think he... I think he's they, trying to look I, like I think he like all these, these type of troll type people. That's that's the term people use for them now, trolls. Um, these people who get all these views and get all this attention. It's a bad end out there. I, I hope don't meet you. Um, it's already been a lot of content creators who've met sad, bad ends because of the content they've created. Um, we live in the age of watch what your mouth say and watch what you say on the internet. Your fingers can get you in a lot of fucking trouble. You can they claim can you have all this artillery. They got Pablo Escobar. He had a whole bunch of artillery too. There's other people out here with the same artillery you got. Watch your mouth before write a check that your ass ain't prepared to cash, man. All you trolls out there, man, like, this, this internet ain't no game. People pull up on you in a heartbeat, man. Yeah, like, you're, you're, you're dropping your locations yeah. and your, your life ends. Yeah, Paul. Because the people out here built like that. People out here don't care. They, they want a problem. People out here live and wake up. You know what? I'm going to fuck somebody up today. That's that's what and that's the agenda for today. Just to find somebody to fuck up, and you could be that one person that you bingo got my person. Mm-hmm. You can have whatever you want to have, and guess what? They got the same shit. It's about who's quickest on the draw, and if you don't see it coming, you ain't gonna be quickest on the draw. I wish everybody mm-hmm. peace and happiness, but goddamn, watch your mouth. Yo, I. I want to list. I want to let y'all know that just because you're behind a phone and on the internet and you might be somewhere, they can still find you. They can find addresses. I've been in the tech uh, tech world for a long time. Your device has an address. It's called a MAC address. <laughs> your ISP has an address, like. They can simply find that joint. And I've seen videos where they went, found it. They went on their computer, whatever program they had, l- located, the, found the comment, found what computer the comment came from, the device that the comment came from. And guess what? They went up there looking for that person. They, it's possible. And it's getting easier and easier to do it every single day. Technology advances every six months. Geo tagging is real, and Watch Japan is twenty years h- ahead of us. So, so Watch your I'm just let you know. And watch what you take. Mm-hmm. Somebody got the means and the resources to get to you. 
They can get to you. Watch your mouth and watch what you type. And stop putting your your location on your on your post. Amen. I'm, 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 I'm gonna say this too. I'm gonna, everybody claiming oh, they they big. Ain't nobody gonna run down on me. I'm big and bad. I'm this. I'm, everybody has his day. Don't think yours can't be today or tonight. You feel me? They make bullets for everybody. And they ain't got no name on you, it. You dropping locations and you, this is my thing. Like, I don't care where I'm at. If I ain't got to have my location on for GPS, I turn my location off. I've never done anything online and say, I'm here. Why? I don't want nobody to know where the hell I'm at. Yeah. I know where I'm at. That's all that matters. You know who I want to know where I'm at? My wife. <laughs> That's who I want to know where I'm at. My wife. Everywhere I go, she know where the hell I'm at. I ain't got to have no location on because I'm a, I'm here. Right. Okay. Uh-uh. I, I, would, I don't care how famous. I, don't drop your location. You asking for problems. You want people to flock to where you at? You gonna have the good yeah, and the bad. There, then you don't know I'm there, and I like you it. You gonna have the good, the bad, and the ugly showing up to where you had to get at all type of issues. Because I don't care what type of celebrity you are, you have hundreds and thousands of people who love you, but you got them few who hate you for whatever reason they do. Look at the person you, who killed John Lennon. If you if you're gonna drop your location or whatever. Actually, don't drop your location. If you're going to do something similar to that, do it to a place you don't normally go to, like a vacation or whatever. When you post the vacation pictures after you were there. See, that's the problem with our culture right there. People want to get them little loopholes or them little, well, if you got to do it. No, they don't do the shit. Or if you do it, realize shit going to happen. Oh, well, I fuck that. Fuck that. And if I record, uh, you see some trees in the background. God damn it, that's about it. Shit. It's a whole bunch of them in the world. Every time we record a video, that shit said we in the United States. Yep. That's, that's about it. It's a lot of land to cover. Damn it. Shoot, I don't even got my room. I, I put Cairo, Egypt. So on my Facebook, post they don't know where I am. By the time, by the time I post it, I ain't there no more. Exactly, that's exactly what I'm saying. Do do that if that, and if you do that, don't do it to a regular place that you go to every single day. Like, don't do that. If 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 you went to Dubai or whatever, I understand you want to tell people you Ooh. went to Dubai. It's Dubai. That's cool. Nobody's. Ain't nobody gonna be rushing to get to Dubai because it's hard to get to Dubai to find you or whatever. That's <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's fine. Plus, and it's hard to get there. Period. Anyway. Location if it's at a food place. Yeah, but like, if you at Chick Fil A, kill. It's like right at or right after they're leaving a place of a uh, eating establishment, whether it's cookies or chicken and waffles or whatever. It's like, nigga, just eat in peace. Don't let nobody know where you're eating. Everybody you want to be business, I understand that. Like, Realize with a certain amount of fame, you can't, you, can't, you can't go everywhere you want to no more. As a regular motherfucking person, it's a lot of places you just can't go. Just because you got more money don't mean you can go You can go less places now. You can go to the exclusive places where you can go. Don't be trying to. I'm a, I'm I'm an everyday man. No, you're not an everyday motherfucker. The everyday motherfucker mm. ain't got them jewels on. Cause you, if they did, you wouldn't be one. It wouldn't be called flossing and all that other shit they call it. To have all that jewels all the time. No, you can't bring that shit around. You can't bring fresh meat around wolves, motherfucker. Yeah. Mm-mm. Niggas gonna eat. Mm-hmm. Yum, yum, yum. I'm hungry now. You matter of fact, I can give you one better. You can't bring fresh meat around hungry wolves and then give them the exact location of where the meat at. That's you're not even letting them hunt. to rob before. You're not even giving them the chance to hunt, motherfucker. 
Hey, here you go. Here we go. You're calling them in. You're making the wolves la lazy. I'm telling you, man, like this day and age, being that rapper who want to be out in public and be flawed, that shit is making y'all endangered species, man. Y'all used to have the most sought after job. Everybody wanted to be a rapper. Now you have one of the most dangerous jobs just to be a rapper. Yeah, I don't even want to be a rapper no more. I love rap. I used to love that shit, dog. You know, goddamn rapper boy. Everybody you, you, gotta, you gotta talk it on your back. You can't I can't name two PNB rock songs, but you're walking around like you're worth a million bucks and somebody wanted to all of it for whatever issue you lost your life. Just being careless. I ain't too familiar with his music, but when I heard some of his songs, I was like, oh, he did that? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. But, you got to be more careful, man. Yeah, got to. Especially in this day and age. Like, with tech, we got to make new rules, man. We got to make new rules for these tech, for this tech stuff. It's, this tech it, ain't, it ain't no new rules. You got to move like the OGs move. But that's the young, that's the thing. The young niggas don't want to move like the OGs no more. You see hole dropping his location? Nope. View rapper nope. do that shit. It's spot. This is my thing. In every field, those who aspire to be the greatest do some things like the greatest do. The positive things that they do, not the negative things they do. They aspire to be the greatest and, and take those things and, and put them in their jar too. Yeah. They ain't doing that no more. Mm -hmm. Everybody think they the greatest, so they want their own thing to shine. Y'all motherfuckers ain't put no time in to be the greatest yet. Be 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 satisfied being good at what you do and build to be the greatest. Study from these motherfuckers, move like these old motherfuckers, and, and advance on that. Shit. Well, you know what? I ain't gonna put it on PMD Rock. It was his girl, but y'all gotta y'all gotta stop that shit. <laughs> Y'all gotta stop that dropping shit. That's, both, I don't even see. Both of them dropped it. Okay, both of them dropped it. Then he said he was saying no. he then he dropped it where he was where he was at, and then she dropped the exact exact restaurant or some shit like that. I don't know. I no. He uh he took a picture of his food, and she I think she um took a picture with the location up there, and whatnot. But I mean, if you look at his food, it's obvious he went to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffle. I don't even get that. Why the fuck are you taking pictures of food, nigga? Eat that shit. Man. Never good. I never, I never understood that. Except when I actually made food for myself and that and it looked great. When I made it myself, that French toast, that was dope. I, I, I it even came out as a dope picture. Or what, yeah, but like, what, I, what, what he I, did, what he did was the equivalent of going to McDonald's in a different state and taking a picture of your quarter pound. That's true. What I say is this. Uh, no cheese. Picture now we're staring at. I tell you what the major problem is, and I'll kind of end my thoughts on it with this. Uh, don't do shit that if people do know where you at, they want to come hurt you. Because there's also mm -hmm. examples of, out of him like a week or two right before this yep. shit, of him getting threatened by dude online as he antagonizes him and talks shit to him and said, call the nigga a bitch and all this. So like if you're mm -hmm. not the type of energy and involving yourself in situations where like someone would have understandable reason to want to harm you or to have animosity towards you, then you're going to find yourself in these situations, whether you're dropping a location or not. I think the biggest thing is, is there's a, there's a level of antagonizing that people are doing without fear or thought of future repercussions like you can't be a troll in real life you gotta stop trolling and thinking ha 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 you know it's just the internet it's not people are real and these non-bot people that you thought ain't real continuously keep taking people away because they thought that there was just the internet like live in real life treat people with respect treat yourself with respect i don't think we're gonna keep having these issues but that's the problem people keep 
poking bears and then wondering why they get bit. Mm-hmm. Keep fuck with this grizzly bear acting act like you don't know why he got slapped. Fuck, well, he slashed your whole body up. Left that people, forget, people would get money and get, get too comfortable and too uh, arrogant or whatever. There is nothing scarier than a person that has, that is hungry. Like, Agreed. really hungry. Agreed. And I actually agree with you and Face. And speaking of hungry grizzlies, I tell you who is hungry and who stay on their grizzly, it's us, the partners. <laughs> so make sure after you finish listening to this wonderful conversation and joining in by hitting us down in the comments below on whatever platform you're listening on or by, you know, the ways that we'll talk about later, please make sure, please make sure that you support us financially. Help us to grow, help us to improve quality, help us to produce more content, help us to make this our dream and have this be our full-time job. You can do that several different ways. Go to Cash App, dollar sign, partner, tiers one, or go to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners, or you can sign up for a membership for as low as $4.99 a month, and you can get exclusive perks, or you can donate for as little as a dollar. You can also sign up to be a monthly supporter for $4.99 a month, on Spotify as well. So if you're a Spotify listener, please be sure to click that support link and help your boys out. Uh, otherwise, another way you can support financially, if you want something back in return, though, you give us money and we give you stuff. Face, how can they do that? Go to the stove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, the name of the <laughs> show is rtrayclothing.com, man. The one and only R Trey Clothing.com. Um, A R T R E, not spelling clothing for the dot com. The only place you can get your official partners podcast merchandise. The only place to find real AC83 merchandise. Come check us out, man. If you see it in the name from R Trey Clothing.com, it's fake. You got a gaggle full of stuff. Believe that. Stuff for Go your head. Stuff for your arms and legs. Stuff for your feet. Got everything from slides and socks to shirts and hats and pants. Even got beach towels and accessories in there too, man. Check us out. It's worth your time. Indeed. Go to the stove. <laughs> Take your ass to the stove. Now, if you're in between paychecks, you can't go to the store today, but you still want to support. You can't click that support button today, but you still want to support. Then go ahead and support for free. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, all of our content on YouTube. Make sure if you're listening to us on a podcast platform like Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever you're listening to us on, make sure that you become a follower or subscriber there as well. Um, if you're listening... Make sure no matter what platform you listen or watch on, make sure you are listening or watching to the full video so that we actually get credit for those, um, that view. And um, if you want to talk to us after you support it, you support it, you've spent money, you get, you went to the store. <laughs> but you just want to talk to us. You want to continue these conversations that we're having. Pat, how can they do that? Yo, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Go to the Twitter <laughs> at T H E P O D N A S. That's at sign T H E P O D N A S. That is the Twitter. That's the TikTok. That's the Instagram. That's the Twitch. Uh, did I say the TikTok? Yeah, I said the TikTok. And Facebook is Tis Face Pat are, are the partners. Yo, Face Face reminded me of the Al Roker cartoon on Family Guy when they ask him something. It's hot. Right, hey, it's hot. how it's doing out there. It's cold. <laughs> All right. <laughs> go to the stove. Go to the stove. Yes. Now, make sure after you go to the stove that you combine all of these things. So after you've liked, shared, subscribed, after you watch the like. video, then you decide that, you know what? This video is worth my time and effort, and I support these black brothers. Let me go ahead and donate or support. And then you decide that, you know what? Let me make sure I represent the pod squad. So you went out and got your AC 83 hoodie or your partner slides. And then you went to the, 
Facebook, the Twitter, the social media, whichever account that you chose from that list that Pat gave you, and you decide, you know what? Hey, I'm going to talk to him there after you've done all of that. Make sure you bring your ass back again next week to join this conversation one more again. And as always, if you forgot who you're talking to, you've been with the partner, your boy Tiz. And I've been along with the other third of the partners, the Padawan here. And I'm along with this creepy ass close up from <laughs> Go to the stove. You know, man, it's your boy Face. We done finished the race in first place once again, man. You could have been anywhere else, but you came here with us once again. Continue to do that. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. Thank you. I knew you were going to come in and do that shit. <laughs> Go to the stove. That's all we got to say. Motherfuckers, love y'all. Take care of yourself this week. Mental health is real. Take care of yourself. Love yourself. Check in on your loved ones. All that good shit. Motherfuckers. I'm going to go get something to eat. I'm hungry. <laughs>